Hey there! In today's episode of KSP Easy Mods, we're going to be looking at Kerbal Engineer Redux. This powerful mod gives you access to very useful ship information, both when building the ship and while in flight. Now on the surface, this mod may seem daunting given the sheer volume of information it can provide, but we'll walk through this step by step and familiarize you with its many functions, and by the time we're done this episode, you won't know how you ever got along without it. I'll also show you how to set up a minimalist configuration of Kerbal Engineer to get you some key flight information without cluttering up your whole screen with a ton of telemetry. So with the introduction behind us, let's jump into CCAN and do a quick install. Okay guys, so with CCAN open, we're going to use our filter as usual and search for Kerbal Engineer Redux. There it is there. Check relationships as we usually do. There are no dependencies. No conflicts. So let's select it for install. And away we go. All right, so with it successfully installed, let's try it out in game. Now, since Kerbal Engineer Redux introduces a couple parts, let's start by having a look at those in the VAB. You'll probably notice right away the new Kerbal Engineer button down near the stock buttons. You can't select it, however, without a ship build underway, so let's create a simple little ship. Start with a Mark 1 command pod. We'll use a small fuel tank. Interior engine. And of course a small parachute. Alright, and let's change our staging up to get the parachute on a separate stage. There we go. Uh, one of the things you also probably noticed as I was putting that ship together was as soon as parts were laid out, we saw the vessel and resource display show up here at the bottom. Uh, that's a standard Kerbal Engineer function, which is great for seeing the overall status of your ship. Uh, whether it be delta V or electric charge or any of these other uh, variables that are on display. Okay, so with the ship built, let's have a look at the VAB interface by selecting the Kerbal Engineer button. As you can see here, there are a number of headers across the top and then there is a list by stage with values under each of those. Uh, the number of parts, the cost of those parts, the mass, the ISP of the engine, the thrust of the engine, torque, thrust to weight ratio, delta V, and the burn duration at maximum thrust. You'll notice that there's only one stage even though we have two stages and of course that's because it only displays stages with fueled engines in them. Now if you select the All Stages button here, you can now see the second stage and they're labeled to match the staging control here at the bottom. So stage zero, parachute stage of course has zero ISP, zero torque, zero thrust to weight, etc. And stage one with the engine is the one with all of, the, all of those values. So we'll turn off All Stages. Uh, atmospheric. You can see here it has altitude and, and speed. Um, I typically only bother with this in the space plane hangar when building space planes because it gives you a little better understanding of your engine performance uh, at altitude and speed because it's going to vary a lot uh, at altitude and speed from sitting on the runway. There's also a settings tab here, but let's come back to that in a minute. First, let's have a look at the Kerbal Engineer parts they're both located in the science tab. So the first part we have here is the ER7500 computer flight unit. It costs 500 funds and it attaches nicely to the outside of your ship like that with a uh, with a neat little animation. The second part is the Kerbal engineering system. It looks a little more like a like a computer chip. Uh, again, it can attach uh, externally as well or uh, it would sit nicely within a, uh, within a service module. That part costs 350 funds. 
Now, both these parts perform the exact same function. They just give you a bit of visual diversity. So what these parts do is they give you access to the Kerbal Engineer data in flight mode, also known as the Flight Engineer. By default, in order to get access to the Flight Engineer displays, you need to have one of these parts attached to your vessel, or you need to have a Kerbal with the engineering skill on board. Later in the game, you can also get this data without either of those things once you've upgraded to a level 3 tracking station. These requirements are editable, however, so let's go back and have a look at that settings tab. As I mentioned to you earlier, we can turn off these displays, the vessel and resource, and the way you do that is on the build engineer overlay. You simply toggle that, uh, be invisible or not visible. In addition, the flight engineer activation mode, default career mode, is as we just explained where you either need the part attached, the Kerbal Engineer, uh, or the Level 3 tracking station. Now, changing it to partless basically overrides that. It gives you access to Flight Engineer in flight mode uh, without any of those prerequisites matched. Alternatively, you can leave it in career mode but turn off the ability for a Kerbal with the engineering skill or the upgraded tracking station to give you Flight Engineer. In other words, the only way to get those displays is by putting the part on your ship. Now the last uh, setting that we're going to look at in this, uh, on this screen is the GUI size. And as you can see, it allows you to adjust up both the font and the overall GUI up or down to give you the size that, uh, that best suits your needs. Okay, so that's it for settings. Let's get the uh, ship on the launch pad and we'll have a look at the flight engineer. All right, guys, now here we are in flight mode, uh, ready to launch. And this is where the real beauty and the real power of Kerbal Engineer Redux comes into play. The build engineer tools in the VAB and space plane hangar are, are great, uh, but for me, this is where the usefulness of this tool really helps out on my missions. So a couple things you can see right off the bat, of course, you'll notice a couple new displays here. As well, you see the Kerbal Engineer Redux icon in the toolbar. So uh, those may not be very easy to see uh, with the clouds in the background, so I'm going to bring that down a little bit just to help with the contrast while we while we go through this alright that's pretty good so when you select the Kerbal Engineer icon you get your main flight engineer window a lot of buttons there looks a little bit intimidating maybe the first time you see it but trust me it's quite simple we'll step through this here you'll be used to it in no time so the first button to uh, to explain is the show engineer button this is a key button because it activates all the displays other than the HUDs. So right now, uh, Show Engineer is not selected. So when you try to turn on the orbital display, nothing happens. Surface, nothing happens. That's because Show Engineer is not activated. It will only show what you have defined as HUDs without the Show Engineer selected. But once we select it, now you see those two displays. They come on and off, and you can keep adding vessel, rendezvous, thermal, etc., etc. Now you'll notice there's a lot of information here, so much so that the thermal uh, actually went off the bottom of, of the screen here. You can pull these out of their default stack by hitting the float button, and then you can move them around wherever you want, wherever you feel appropriate, or you can restack them back up. But again, none of these will display if Show Engineer is not on. So that's the Show Engineer button. Very straightforward. The control bar is basically an alternative to, to this window. So if you don't want to always have to click the icon and make your selections out of, the, out of the main Flight Engineer window, you just activate the control bar. Well, where's the control bar? Well, again, Show Engineer is not selected. So you have the Show Engineer, and now your control bar is on. And really, as I said, that's just a nice alternative. It can stay there statically. You don't have to come over here and keep clicking the flight engineer main window. You can simply turn off and on your displays 
through this uh, through this uh, toolbar. And again, all the same capabilities of pulling them out, moving them around, all those same uh, capabilities exist. So there's the control bar. Let's turn those all back off. Now, another great thing about this tool is that almost everything is editable. So you see the little edit buttons along the side. Every one of these has an edit as well as you can create your own new uh, displays and, uh, and I'll show you that in a minute but just to give you an example if we edit the HUDs and I'll show you the configuration that, that I typically use I do a, a couple very simple little things here first of all I always add a system time a real world clock to my uh, to my first HUD so that I can always tell what time it is and how many hours are passing by as I play KSP and then of course when you're in edit mode when you have the edit tool selected you can see the background came up on the on this HUD that's how you know you can move it around so what I typically do is I move both of them to the left of my altimeter because when I play you know in my main game with my main playthrough I have a few more uh, toolbar icons here, and they start to uh, and they start to collide with the information on on the second HUD. So, I add the system time. I move the two uh, HUDs to one side, and I just find uh, for me that works great. And as I was saying, each of these can be edited. And as we saw with the system time, you can add information to any of these. But it's not just the HUDs. You know, it's the, the surface is another display here. Let's have a look at. You can select any piece of information from any of these other subgroupings. The data is not uh, restricted or constrained by the, by the type of data. It will allow you to put vessel data, for instance, on your surface display. So if we want to say, how many parts? There you go. We just added that right now to the surface display and there it is. The other thing about um, these displays is each one of them can be converted to a HUD and you can see that right here with this button. So now it's a HUD and as we talked about before, even with Show Engineer turned off, it remains because it's, it's a HUD. So you can also create those as HUDs and put them, put them wherever you want around the screen. I don't do that, but of course you're free to do that because they built that capability into the tool. The other thing you might have noticed, actually I'll uh, I'll show you with one of the other one of the default HUDs. You see this BG tool. Once you convert a display to a HUD, you get a background button. And that allows you to select the background just to ensure that there's contrast and that that HUD is readable uh, in any situation. So there you can see there, I'll do the same thing with the second HUD. So now, even if we're looking uh, right into a white background, that where that white text would normally be uh, almost impossible to read, now it's giving you that contrast. So that remains all the time. Lastly, we should probably look at creating a new custom selection. So this is if you want to build a new display or a new HUD customized with exactly the information that you want to see first thing you do of course is you rename it max display and then you pick whatever data you want out of whatever groupings you just go ahead and, and build up uh, your display that you want to see and there you have it and again it's a custom display but you have all the same capabilities you can HUD it you can put a background on it you can leave it as as a display that you can turn off and on here through the flight engineer main window and as well you'll see it's showed up here now on the on the flight engineer control bar so that's the second title which still uh, shows custom 4 that's because I didn't fully edit the uh, the headers so you can see I edited the main display but not this one let's call this one max 4 and there you go now you can see it's been renamed in the in the control bar as well so 
as I said, a great way to get information, very powerful tool. I typically run it without the backgrounds and with the system time shown. That's pretty much how I how I run it right there. Um, but it's totally flexible as, as we've just seen. You can create not only any display, but you can locate it anywhere on the screen. You can put any data in it that you want. Just a tremendously powerful tool, great tool. But yet at the end of the day, all of that capability boils down to a couple nice transparent HUDs here on the screen. They're not intrusive. You're not flooding your flight view with, uh, with telemetry or, or other data that you want to look at. You can have it be as much or as little as you want. And for me, that's just great. So to give you a quick real world example of how this improves the playability of the game. Uh, you don't have to look any further than the default HUD 1 where it has Apple apps and time to Apple apps, Perry apps, time to Perry apps. Normally when you're doing your launch and you're doing your ascent you would typically have to keep switching back and forth into map view in order to see where your Apple apps is, to see if you've made it as high as you're targeting uh, your vessel to begin its orbit. And that constant switching back and forth is something that's now completely eliminated with uh, with this tool in place because you just keep an eye on your app wap site right there when it gets to 70 you know you're going to be in a position to create an orbit 70 kilometers or if you're targeting an intercept with a station that you know is at 150,000 uh, meters then you keep burning until your app wap's gets to 150 so you know that is a, a, just a quick example of a, real, of a real impact that this tool has that changes the way you play, that I think improves the way you play, just by giving you uh, that information right here in the flight mode. So can't say enough uh, great things about Kerbal Engineer. As I said, it is a powerful tool. It can present you with a lot of data. It can overwhelm you if you're not uh, selective in, in what you look at and when you look at it. But once you've got it configured to, uh, to your liking, it can really improve the game. So I hope you guys all go ahead and get Kerbal Engineer Redux for your KSP install. And we'll see you in the next episode. Take care.